Good morning, I'm meteorologist Jonathan O with the weather page and westernpacificweather.com. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are. This is the late morning edition of the Typhoon Halola update. And right now we're still looking at a strong typhoon. The intensity continues to remain on hold with the pressure sitting at 965 hectopascals. It is moving now to the north and west at 15 kilometers per hour. So it is starting to pick up a little bit more speed and momentum as it gets closer and closer to Okinawa. Okinawa and Amami Islands. Winds continue to stay steady at 126 kilometers per hour, uh, which is about 78 miles per hour, with gusts up to 180 kilometers per hour, which is about 112 miles per hour. Now, the system is continuing to keep its characteristic swirl as it continues to circulate and move closer toward Okinawa. You can see right now, I want to point out here, uh, these the clouds have now completely covered Okinawa and the winds are starting to pick up. We'll take a look at the uh, latest information when it comes to the wind speeds coming up in just a bit. Amami Islands, you're also, uh, it, it may eventually start to get a little bit more cloud cover as we progress a little bit further out, but right now we're seeing more in terms of the cloud cover for Okinawa. The latest Doppler radar imagery provided by the Japan Meteorological Agency is showing us the rain is uh, at least the far outer bands, the light rain is starting to approach Okinawa, but it hasn't really made that big impact quite yet. So for the moment, the rain is still staying offshore, but we can see on the returns here some of the really heavy precipitation that pops up on this. Uh, it is having a little bit of a hard time keeping an eye on that. You have to remember that as radar shoots out the signal, sometimes when you encounter a lot of it, heavy data at the beginning it tends to weaken the signal as it continues to progress further out so in terms of our return we're having some of that visible in this particular perspective nevertheless it is now making its way over the island and this should give you a better idea of how the system is progressing you can see uh, Okinawa at least the main island of Okinawa uh, we're seeing the clouds now starting to cover it and with these brighter colors in this A-band enhancement perspective and we're seeing the taller clouds meaning some of the more intense uh, clouds are now moving in so the wind should start to uh, pick up even more as we progress throughout the afternoon and evening hours here are the current wind information that we're getting right now uh, the highest speed so far is being picked up along uh, Okinawa at 54 kilometers per hour which is 33 miles an hour winds and areas toward Naha uh, we're seeing winds a little bit weaker, but again, they're starting to pick up. And you can see the characteristic uh, northerly patterns and northeasterly patterns because we're located along the northwestern quadrant of this uh, typhoon. As we continue on through, we'll see those winds switch around. I do want to point out that Daitojima is seeing winds as high as 86 kilometers per hour, or that's equivalent to 54 mile an hour winds. So uh, definitely can see that as this progress we can see those winds starting to pick up even more as you go throughout the afternoon and evening hours. Here is the latest forecast track from the Japan Meteorological Agency and this is going to give us more of more of an idea of how we're going to see the system progress as we go throughout the next 24 hours. By the time we go into noon, we will see the center of circulation continuing to move toward the north and west. And by the time we go into the evening hours around six o'clock tonight we will see the central portion of the circulation really uh, moving over the islands as we go into midnight the central portion of the circulation will move past these islands and get closer toward Kyushu but we're going to see the impact still remaining until close to mid-morning on Sunday. That's when most of the clouds will move further and further toward the north. And that's when Kyushu, especially for the western edge of Kyushu, you will probably see the increasing wind and even the rain bands as we move forward. The waves are already going to be affecting you, but the winds and the rain will start to pick up as we go throughout the day Sunday. Now, as we progress forward, the system will weaken quite rapidly. In fact, uh, JMA is no longer issuing a five-day track. This is the furthest out there willing to plan out and it ends on Monday morning when we see the system move into the Sea of Japan. It looks like that at least the central point is not going to hit the mainland of South Korea. It's going to move slightly east, but Busan, uh, you're likely going to get quite a bit of a uh, windy, windy start to your Monday.
Uh, as the system weakens, it's going to really become just a mainly a wet storm, a rainy system, uh, as we go throughout the first part of Monday. And possibly even into Tuesday, it's going to be interesting because it's going to start drifting. And already, South Korea is dealing with the rainy season for the moment. And so this is going to just add to the persistent rainfall that folks have been dealing with for the past several days. We continue to watch out for the waves. I mentioned this for the past couple of updates that we will see winds uh, continue to push those waves higher and higher. As we go into the evening hours, this is a model forecast for around 9 o'clock tonight on Saturday night. We are expecting these waves to really hit their maximum level. Some areas may even see wave heights as high as 8 meters, which is about 26 feet. The gusts possibly up to 200 kilometers per hour. I think that, that may be a little aggressive at this point. We're going to see, because the gusts from the central portion of the circulation have backed off now to 180 kilometers per hour. Nevertheless, we will still see strong gusts as we go throughout the afternoon and evening hours. Rainfall amounts will remain at around 150 millimeters or around 6 inches. And depending on where you are on the islands, you may get a little bit less or a little bit more. It just depends on how uh, this these rain bands continue to move through. We do have high wave warnings that are in place now for both Okinawa and also into Amami Islands. Uh, these areas are looking at these very high waves. Uh, we were expecting this to eventually happen. Okinawa turned over into a warning situation uh, last night, Friday night, and then we saw the update and Amami was switched over into a warning status as we went into uh, Saturday morning. So. Again, please stay away from the coastline. This is the time period where you need to be staying indoors as this system continues to move through. Here's the hourly planner. Uh, and we're not expecting much change in temperatures. We'll maybe get a couple of degrees cooler as we progress through the day. Around noon, we'll see breezy conditions. Temperatures will be around uh, 29 degrees Celsius, about 84 degrees Fahrenheit. The, those temperatures will stay relatively steady. Because you're uh, on islands, uh, you're getting mainly the maritime effects. And so... Since the tropical system is not bringing a bunch of cold air in, we're not expecting it to really cool off anytime soon. Uh, the peak time period for rain and winds will take place close to around 6 to 9 o'clock tonight, and then we will see temperatures driving off of the degree or two. It's not going to be a huge change. But you will notice that the winds will likely start to shift coming from a different direction as we go toward the evening hours, and then by the time we go into Sunday, we'll see those winds start to taper off. Let me emphasize again that this is not the worst storm that Okinawa has dealt with. So, I mean, this is not a situation where you're like, oh my goodness, this is going to be horrible. But it is a typhoon. It is equivalent to a Category 1 hurricane. And so you want to make sure that you are staying safe and staying smart during this time period as the system moves overhead. Again, once we get past Saturday and we go into Sunday afternoon, we should start seeing some improvement and we should see a better conditions, especially by Monday for Okinawa and into the Amami Islands. That is the latest update. And again, if you're safely able to do so, we ask that you send in the pictures and videos to our Facebook page at Western Pacific Weather. We would uh, be able to, we would like to be able to take a look at what's happening on the ground level as we progress throughout the day. Thank you so much. On behalf of the team at Western Pacific Weather, I'm meteorologist Jonathan O. Hope you have a good day wherever you are.